Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kipadster.com, out here with my course loadout from the two-day night fighter course with Holistic Solutions Group. Before heading down there, looked at the weather, knowing it's going to be basically a little southwest Salt Lake City in the winter, beginning of December. Knew it was going to be cold, might be snowy, so all the layers came. With kind of, I guess, starting with base layers and stuff like that, was wearing these guys, no thermals underneath, but these Raider softshell pants by Prometheus Design Works, just cause they were my like everyday pants and I was wearing them. And then when it was time to get on the range and stay warm, largely not doing a bunch of dynamic stuff, I'd throw on all the warm layers over that. And with that, socks are important. These right here by Fitz, they are like ski socks, knee high, essentially, pretty clutch. There were a lot of people that were definitely not dressed for the weather. On both days, I ended up wearing this, which is by Beyond. It is their Alpha Stretch L5 jacket, I guess it is, or Alpha L5 Stretch jacket, something like that. Just reviewed it not very long ago. Pretty solid layer. Not for that cold though. Think of it as kind of like Arcteryx Atom LT as far as weight and warmth, but ended up wearing that. And then also this guy right here, which is Celerus L2, I think, by Beyond. Basically kind of a mid-layer. Inside it's kind of almost like a grid fleece. And yeah, had all that stuff on. And then when we'd go out there, because do not want to be cold, I had my level seven stuff by Beyond. I believe it's their Cetra Durable L7. So jacket and pants. And the thing that I like, part of the reason I chose these is one, they zip on and off really easy. So if I want, I can zip down from the top, access pockets of my actual pants, and also zip these things on and off like over boots, and you have a belt. This right here is the inner belt of the belt like system I was wearing. We'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, all that stuff was, it was clutch. Day one or night one kind of got cut short because a lot of people unprepared, really cold, and getting to the point of diminishing return, uh, returns. Like people hanging out in vans. Not the best footwear choice. I also had this, pretty sweet, by Coltac, like a knuckle roaster. Put it around my waist, keep my hands warm, and then last but not least, these guys right here, which are the Solomon Tundra boots. These things were amazing. And as usual, kind of threw all my stuff in this PDW CC12, just because it's handy. I can throw all of the things in there. As far as iPro, man, I finally got a new iPro. It did not arrive in time, so still using these guys, nice and scratched up. My Smith Director Elite with ballistic lenses, but they did work even though they are really scratched. As far as ear pro, two different pairs depending on what we were doing. Initially doing a little bit of stuff during the day, I ended up wearing these, which are the Auto Noise Barrier Micros. Really nice, easy, I could throw them in under my beanie, stay warm, and have my hearing protected. Same time it's amplified, so be able to get range commands and stuff like that. Well, we didn't do much pistol shooting. I did have my pistol, battle belt on. This one right here by Core it has their micro adjustments. Over on this side, these quickie pouches by STAC, and then this prototype, actually AK pouch. And I will say, I was like, I want to make sure I have like at least three magazines plus a fourth of my gun, which it does fit in here. My magazines, I mean, these guys right here, these steel mags for the FAL, but this is actually made and sized for AK mags, which while these do fit, it was pretty tight pulling them out versus the leverage you get with an AK mag. So after that, I was like, eh, probably won't throw them in there anymore. And then right here, this is the dump pouch by Coltac. It was actually really handy being able to dump pouches or dump pouches in, 
dump magazines in when I had an empty magazine because the range was all covered in snow. Didn't really want to just leave them hanging out there. Coming around the belts, had this holster, Safari Land with the True North Concepts, and then this guy right here, basically this like leg rig, essentially works with pretty much any strap by carry concealment. And then for my pistol, tried and true Glock 17 Mount Duty pistol with a Hollow Sun and the Surefire Turbo Light. Didn't really use it much, it's mainly focused on carbine. Since I needed to carry mags and some other gear, it's usually good to have, like first aid kits. Ended up actually using this right here by Spirit of Systems. I believe it's their Thing 1 or Thing 2. And then their Microfight chassis, I believe they're Mark 5. Took the front pouch off because I didn't need that stuff. And I put the 2 mag insert for 308 and ran those two magazines across the front. And then over here, this kind of GP pouch actually was really handy. One, we had, had some kind of extra gear that didn't use in there. But we basically were running these chamber flags when we weren't actually firing. So did not lose it, fortunately. Threw that thing in here, kept it safe in there. And then I would also usually throw a spare mag in there, walking out to the range because I didn't have like pockets per se. It's pretty handy. Uh, had my radio on that radio pouch. Wasn't really doing any comm stuff. I had used this before, pulled the pouch I had on off of this from over there because I didn't need it, and then kept this. Basically, blowout kit with access to a tourniquet on the bottom, the RMT. And I will say this actually was great. Being able to have everything right there in front, just where I need it, and yeah, not bulky, worked out pretty well. Which brings me to my night vision setup. I had everything in this, which is the helmet bag by Ot Oti Gear, Ate Gear, whatever it is. This helmet bag, it's pretty handy, pretty much keeps everything organized. So inside here had my helmet, Ops Core, I believe it's their XP mid century cut, something like that. And again, two different sets of ear pro, so I didn't have to switch back and forth. Kept these just on my helmet. And this little guy by Unity Tactical, pretty handy because we needed identifiers at night moving around live fire. So I'd turn that thing on, visible from all directions, cycle through, turn it off. And this right here, which I believe is a Sidewinder. Yeah, Sidewinder stock by Streamlight, really handy. Can switch back and forth between white, IR, or red, and turn it on, turn it off. You can adjust it too. It's actually really nice using that for like admin tasks. And it's not very bright, which is what I wanted. Didn't want something very bright. So that helmet actually worked out really well, nice and comfortable. And then for my night vision, on my Wilcox G24 mount, I was using these DTNVSs by Lucentia Arms. These things are really amazing. Down here on the bottom, and you can kind of see on the back too, I have the mission recorders by Unobtainium Gear, I believe it is. And I was running them on both eyes so I could pull footage from both eyes and pretty cool. Like, kind of bulky, hangs off of them. You can mount them on your helmet. I still have them just mounted on the tubes, but was running those, so I was able to get some pretty cool footage, which was nice. And then the other thing that we did some stuff where it probably would have been more beneficial, but honestly just kind of threw it on there to play around with it some. And it is actually pretty cool which is a Cody. So basically on the front right here, flip that down and it's a thermal. And then this piece projects it. So it goes onto your tube, projects a thermal overlay, get some pretty cool images. And depending on what you're doing can actually be kind of really beneficial. 
And lastly, my rifle, because who doesn't want to bring a battle rifle to a carbine class? Get to do up drills with a 12 pound gun. But I was using this right here by DS Arms. It is their, I think, kind of modernized SBR battle rifle using a FAL, shortening some stuff down and giving it Picatinny rail across the top, as well as Imlock so you can use it like a modern rifle. So to that end, I was using this EOTech, pretty handy. I like that the rail actually sits a little high, so when you're behind it, it's kind of like shooting more heads up. And with that, easier to get behind it, shooting passive, with night vision. And then up front here, I was using this right here, which I, I think I reviewed this a while ago. It is IR Only by Steiner OTAL, I believe it's called and not my favorite because the switches where you either it's off or you can turn it to momentary but you have to run a switch or you just turn it constant on there's no actual switch on it but it actually did good for my purposes ended up running it ran the switch from there back over to this which is by not unity i think they actually make the housing for it but it is from mod light and it's their dual lead button. So one lead coming to this IR, and then the other one coming over to this right here, which is Surefire tail cap, which allows for me to actually use the clicky button on the back, should this fail, this connection there. And then up here on the head of it, the key G. So either 10 or 40 degrees, depending on what you want. I think I had it programmed to medium high. And then this is the twin light body from Echo Arms. That one right there, that cell being CR123, which is what I have that Kiji head on and that tail cap. And then over here, this one is 13, 16, 350, 18, 350. One of those rechargeable, the smaller, not the bigger one, basically. And Surefire tail cap on that, protected, so I can't accidentally press it. And then the new Surefire turbo head. So really bright white light. And also on here, kind of first time spending time with it, this sling right here by Kyle Lamb, Viking Tactics. Pretty cool, it's his new sling, like there's a way to stow it. One of the things is that I kind of love, hate about his slings is you can adjust them a lot and get them really tight. And you also kind of have like tails on them, which costs to do in business. Um, oh yeah, and since this is a 308 and I didn't want to blow my eardrums out or make massive fireballs using this right here, which is the direct thread. This is the shorter of the two, the half Nelson versus the full Nelson by Q and yeah. I ended up shooting this gun throughout the course. Definitely not light. Well, it was pretty fun shooting this gun in that course. Is there a reason to do up drills with a 12 pound rifle in a carbon course? Not really, other than spending like a dollar a round or close to it. I will say I ran into a couple of malfunctions. I'm not sure if it was with this, this Red Army Standard steel case stuff, or I know one was with that. And then the other one may or may not have been with some of the brass case stuff, which was, I think, American Eagle. And a couple of things. One, that right there. I will say the manual of arms, it is different. And while this has a ambi mag release, which I guess is kind of nice, it also gets in the way of the bolt catch bolt release for me personally anyway, over here on this side, whereas usually that mag release is just over on that side. The safety took a little doing, getting used to, and then of course the manual of arms. Under nods coming up, rocking that thing in, which is really easy during the day when you're looking at it. At night under nods, not quite as much. The issue I ran into is I think a little bit of short stroking after that reached up here you can adjust the gas block no tools you just twist this thing and this actually has a special plug in there to run suppressed so gave it some more gas didn't run into that issue anymore i did run into a weird issue where basically a case or i don't know if it was 
had been fired or not, but a round got stuck in there. And I had to mortar it out. Pretty sure it was one of the steel case ones, probably half empty magazine got dropped on the ground, came up full of snow and yeah, it was like 20 degrees out. So I think it just wedged and froze itself in the chamber. Again, mortared it out, gave it some lube and did not run into any other issues. And as far as just kind of set up on this, I will say I actually liked it. It did a good job for me. Again, going back to laser, I took a laser, like just laser, and then matched it with a really good illuminator, the Kiji, and put it to a dual lead. So every time I'd bring it up, mash that one button, I would get my IR illuminator and IR laser. Then when we were working white light, again, not gonna accidentally hit that, I'd basically bring my hand around so I could press that and activate my white light when I needed it. No white light NDs, which was good because there were definitely a number of those in the class. So kind of thoughts overall on this whole setup. I will say MVP out there, probably these boots and those beyond level seven. Being able to be at a class and be comfortable, that's huge. I mean, if it's a class during the summer where you're just gonna be hot, maybe you're gonna sweat, you're gonna sweat, like whatever. But if it's a class during the winter where you get cold, once you get cold, you're not gonna like rewarm and you're just gonna be miserable. You're not gonna be capable of taking in information and you're probably gonna get dangerous. You're gonna lose dexterity, probably make some poor choices, which is why we cut short that first night. People were starting to just kind of fade out. They were too cold, ill-prepared. So having that stuff, that was huge. Like with that stuff there, I could just lay in the snow if I wanted and still be comfortable. As far as this gun, it's a big gun. So you get into, do you need to do up drills with a battle rifle at like a dollar a round? Probably not, but it was pretty fun. And ultimately I ended up using courses or competitions as a backdrop for my review. So it definitely gave me time behind it and put me in positions that maybe I otherwise wouldn't put myself in with respect to some of the things we did, shooting and things along those lines. So it was good. As far as night vision, definitely it was nice having those DTNVSs, pretty lightweight, even with those mission recorders on there, they don't weigh much and helmet, pretty comfortable. Yeah, all the rest of the gear, the thing one, two, whichever it was, Spirit of Systems rig, that did good. Same with the belt, dump pouch, nice throw mags in there. Pretty much across the board, all the gear, honestly did a pretty good job for me. And at the end of the day, it was actually a really fun class. But down below, there'll be a link, take you over. You'll have links to all of this gear. And yeah, pretty cool time out there. And last but not least, if you have questions for me and want to support the channel, go over to Patreon. Little as a dollar a month gives you early access to videos and access to our Discord where happy to answer those questions for you. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.